When told about the underground prison, old memories came to Chinapalyavatarayar. Forgetting the formal courtesies, he said, Yes, you've been to the dungeon once. You went with the younger brat. You came to spy on someone who escaped, didn't you? No, sir. You are not right. We did not go to the dungeon that day to learn about one another. We went to learn about the messenger sent by the Crown Prince Aditha Kari Kalar with the straw. That's what you thought. How do you know if he's an angel or an angel? You ignorant little girl. It's no use arguing with you. You're gone. You know anything about him? No, the one we went to see has gone free without you even knowing. The order of Nandini Devi, the youngest queen of Palvur, has overtaken us. Poor. What will you do? The little reaper bit his lip. Wasn't even such a young woman fed up that her demeanor was giving too much space to the younger queen despite his warning? Without showing the feeling of shame that had arisen in his heart, he said, For your part you have freed a half madman. Said. Sir. You call a muthan, who is serving Pushpa, half mad? You will be surprised to know how much the Chola country benefited from his release that day. Lady. I'm not going to be surprised by anything anymore. I'm tired of wondering who this Chola kingdom owes to whom. You two have come to do some important good for the Chola country, haven't you? Yes, sir. If there was no important matter, would their father have sent me? And even more so, would he have sent me, an ignorant girl? My Tamayanar is growing wiser. It has been evident since I sent you. Be quick with the message you bring. He told them to tell them that it was wrong to be indifferent to the Pandian conspirators. Some of Vera Pandian's menaces are indeed plotting a terrible conspiracy, today they are planning to take revenge on the Chola clan. He told them to warn them that the emperor should be protected. Hearing this, Kalan Takakandar laughed. Did he send you this wonderful message? I saw that perhaps your great father sent you information about the arrival of an army. If he watches Kajumbalar's army from outside, I will see to it that nothing happens to the emperor inside the fort. He, you, and even I Lyaprati don't have to worry about that. Said. Sir. Knowing that you will regard this as indifferent, he has sent one more thing. He warned you that a magician often visited the palace of the young queen of Palvur. He did not listen to it and became angry with them. Brother. I have committed a great crime. That magician is Ravidasan. The Pandian conspirator. The leader of Vera Pandian's menaces. He who is plotting to root out the Chola clan. One of his men will try to take revenge on the emperor today, be careless. Be on your guard this is the message of the great avenger to them. I have done my duty. Kalan Takakander was a little stunned. Such a message could not have been sent by anyone but the elder. Girl. If this is true why didn't he come here right away? Why did he send you? He did not send me. He told the younger bratty. The younger bratty sent me. Adida Kari Kalar is also in danger today. So he has gone back to save him. From where? Where did he see you? The astrologer saw it at home. If your doubts are still unclear, ask this too. When their brother came across the land in a boat, the boat capsized in a storm. He escaped and found out what the conspirators were saying while he was lying on the shore. Sir. Do you want to stay here and talk? Or can you go to the palace? Woman. Let what you say be true. No matter how conspiratorial you are, you can't get past the castle guard. I came in because you're a woman. What does it mean to come from outside? If the conspirators stay inside the castle. One day is impossible. Well, that's their responsibility. My duty. You're done. You can go back now. No, sir. I have only done half of my duty. To see the emperor and tell the younger brat his message is all done. You can tell me that news too. The impossibility, young Braddy's courage to inform the emperor in person. Here is young Braddy's signet ring. Ah! 
the signet ring goes to someone. How can you be sure that it was the youngest brat who gave it? Your great father has besieged this castle. How can you be trusted? What danger are you afraid of a slanderous woman? Woman! The Pavur clan does not know what fear is. Then let me go all the way to the palace, and you too. The emperor's anxiety is very high these days. I have come with a message to settle the confusion, sir. You will feel sorry for delaying me when you know what it is. The little gardener looked a little surprised, and said, Lady. Perhaps the little prince have you brought news of Pawnee's suitor? Said. Yes, commander. Ah! Is the little prince all right? Where is he coming now? He by the conspirators. Yes, his life was in danger from the Pandian conspirators. But by the grace of God he is safe and sound. Isn't that pleasing to them? Good question. Will they mourn rather than rejoice that the little prince is safe? Come, come. I don't want to waste time with you. Come to the palace and tell the emperor what you have to say in person. Saying this, the little farmer led his elephant up. He was also very eager to know about the prince. He never considered Aromas Hivarman a match for his son-in-law Madhurandhagan to ascend the throne of Tanjavur. He knows that the emperor has no such intention. There is no one who can beat the word father. The concern is that the squatters should not interfere and make any mess. Is she up to some intrigue now, what? Had she kept Aromas I in her possession and sent a mixed message to any father? If this Kajumbalar girl had really brought news about the prince and told it to the emperor, he would not have told it to her. If we know what Aromas Hivarma's intention is, can't they decide what to do accordingly? At that time, Buddhavikrama Kesari could also inform the emperor about the conspiratorial action that had taken the Tanjore fort. The two elephants came and stood at the gate of the palace. The little hunter easily jumped down from the elephant. Another elephant knelt down shaking like a mountain. The two women and the elephant came down. Taking the gate guard, the small gardener said something. He opened the front door of the palace. The message that Vanatha said that his Tamayanar had sent was looming in Kalantaka Kandar's mind. He could not ignore it. Mainly, the sorcerer learned about Ravi Dasan. His peace of mind was greatly disturbed. He was already aware of Veera Pandya's dangers. But they did not know that they had got a place inside Tanjavur Fort itself. He was convinced that the younger queen of Palyavur was calling the sorcerer and talking to her only to gain more control over the elder Palyavetarayar. Anand thought that it might be her intention to create animosity between the siblings. Now what this woman is saying is a little scary news. But what could any magician or conspirator do? Not even a fly could enter the emperor's palace without his permission. The emperor does not come out. However, it is better to strengthen the security around the palace a bit more. Many people had come inside the fort for two days saying it was storm flood and to see the prime minister. I don't know if they all went out. Today, I suddenly opened the fort door and it went well. Malicious men, suspicious men, may well examine to see if anyone has entered this castle. I don't know if they all went out. Today. I suddenly opened the fort door and it went well. Malicious men, suspicious men, may well examine to see if anyone has entered this castle. I don't know if they all went out. Today, I suddenly opened the fort door and it went well. Malicious men, suspicious men, may well examine to see if anyone has entered this castle. In this way, he brought the elephant in mind as he approached the upper palace. He signalled to his men who were always ready at one side of the palace gate. He ordered them to thoroughly search the entire interior of the fort and arrest anyone found suspicious. Then, intending to tell the soldiers of Vilakara to guard the palace and its surroundings without sleep that night, he signalled to send their leader. At this point, he looked back to see what had become of the women who had come on top of the elephant. They were then passing the Nila courtyard in front of the palace and approaching the first gate. But, but, who is he? That third figure following them? If you look at the turban, it looks like an elephant. Aha! Uh -huh. 
Why does the elephant keep going? What is his job in the palace? What is the matter with the emperor? A most terrible thought flashed through his mind and caused him unspeakable pain. Raised a frown. Maybe there is some trick to it. Is he the conspirator? Have you cheated these women and come back like an elephant? Are we also deceived? Is Veera Pandiar, who came to kill the emperor before his eyes, going to the palace? Is it such a big surprise for Kalantaka Kandan? Or did Bhuthivikrama join Kesari's intrigues? Be that as it may, in the next moment everything will be known. At four o'clock, Kalantaka Kandar crossed the Nila yard and approached the elephant. Hey! Stop here! He made a roar. Why are you going in? What is the elephant doing in the palace? Saying that, he grabbed one of his arms with his Vajrayuta like hand fist. Hearing his angry roar, the two women who had gone ahead looked back. Their faces reflected some emotions of fear, surprise, curiosity, etc. At the same time, the smile blossomed. Vanatha started to say something, sir. He. He. and hesitated a bit. The little predator, who had reached the height of his enmity, did not look back at her, she didn't even want to listen to the word. His suspicions were further confirmed by the elephant's stumble. At that moment, he had the perverse thought that he was the youth of the monkey clan who had cheated him once before and ran away. Has he come so boldly that he might deceive himself again? Tightening his grip a little more, the little reaper yelled, Ada! Tell the truth! Who are you? Is it an elephant? Or a conspirator? The one that got away from me last time? We can't escape this time. Saying, the elephant turned his face towards him without letting go of his grip. The light of the lamps burning in the front hall of the palace fell lightly on the majestic face of the elephant. Commander. I am an elephant too. I have never run away from you. I have come to surrender myself to you. Said the elephant. Kalan Takakandar looked at that face. He heard that voice. It was as if the whole upper world had collapsed and fallen on his head. He stood stunned like that. He didn't even feel like letting go of the handle. The handle loosened and released Prince Aroma's Hivarmara, 